Okay, so today we're gonna talk about how you can do video production from your phone, like the most basic thing. You guys all watch my videos, so, well, some of you do, and obviously you're watching this one, so you know that video works, and wouldn't it be great to have you do video in your business? I'm here with Sarah Fisher. Sarah, hi. Hello, George. Yeah, how are thanks you? for doing this. So, Sarah's the expert on making videos. Uh, we're gonna talk about video production, uh, basic stuff. We're not talking about high tech, you know, like having a team. No, we're talking about solopreneurs like, like you and me. And uh, we're gonna talk about YouTube channel. We're gonna talk about making videos on your phone, et cetera. But let me first start with Sarah's uh, background, just briefly, and then we'll get into these topics. Okay, so Sarah has uh, 20 years of uh, working in video production. And in her career, she has worked at MTV News, at the U.S. Information Agency, at C-SPAN, CBS News, a and &E Television, and now at her, um, I mean, she was inspired um, recently to really just past the years to work uh, with business owners, uh, particularly people who, you know, don't have a team, they're just kind of wanting to do it to make sure that uh, they can do it themselves. But she also works with people that are, are, are larger businesses too. But um, she specifically loves working with heart-centered entrepreneurs. That's why uh, she's having a conversation with me today. So Sarah, let's start with this topic of why video production literacy. So when, when, <clears throat> when I hear video production, and I don't know, uh, those of you watching this, what do you, what do you think of when you think of video production? What does that bring to mind? Like, feel free to comment below. We, I'm genuinely interested, and I'm sure Sarah would love your answer. So pause this right now comment what does video production mean for you all right ready I'm gonna start sharing what that means to me but I don't want to bias your thoughts so comment below okay so Sarah I'll, I'll share with you what I think and uh, I'd love to uh, to kind of know what your what your take on this so when I think video production what immediately comes to mind is the kind of work that that you have done and the kind of work that my my niece does uh, she she you know works with large companies. She's actually a, a, a you know budding director, you know video director uh, in a in a marketing agency, and she works with, with large companies. Like one minute of video production costs something like tens of thousands of dollars for like one minute, something like that. I, I forget the exact numbers, but it was like an astronomical, maybe even hundreds of thousands. I don't know, but it was like so much money that I couldn't even imagine. <laughs> I'm like really. So it's course, it involves teams and all. That. So that's what I think of when I think of video production. But of course, you're talking to me and to other heart-centered entrepreneurs. Many of us are solopreneurs. So tell us how we can, how we can learn video production from our, you know, not a high company budget, but from our tiny, tiny budgets here. Yeah, thank you. I'm really excited to be talking to you, George, and to your audience because the video landscape has changed so much in the past like 10, 15 years. Um, you know, ever since YouTube and lots of other social media channels have come about and Facebook has been pushing videos so big in the past five years um, and they've released, you know, technology tools which you use like Facebook Live and other tools to help entrepreneurs and small business owners get the word out through video. And that's because they know that video is effective. But um, prior to that, prior to the landscape really being changed with social media, traditionally video production has been super expensive. And so I think some people still do have that in their mind. And as I've gone through my journey um, running my company, I would go out to networking events and I would meet you know, lots of entrepreneurs and business owners. You know, traditionally like, the CMOs and you know uh, the marketing directors of large companies, they aren't necessarily going to your local networking event. So I just meet a lot of people who run small businesses like me, and they would say, oh, I would love to do videos with you, but I just can't afford it. And then they would start to ask you know, some questions about how they can get started with video. And it took a while for me to kind of you know, come around to, to um, offer, the services that I am now, but um, you know, I really just felt compelled that you know the landscape is going to continue to be democratized. That it's going to be easier and easier 
you know, and we can see the evidence right now with like so many social video apps, so many ways that you can easily edit and that you can edit for free. And I think it does intimidate, honestly, like a lot of my colleagues and um, a lot of the people I know that do run video production companies, you know, we start to wonder like, when, when are we going to go out of business? Um, there still are going to be like corporations and bigger companies that are always going to have a marketing budget and they're always going to want to pay, you know, top dollar for, for uh, professional videos. Um, but I just felt really compelled to bring, you know, the tools and, and help people kind of get over that fear of being on video as well. Because yeah. I just see that the landscape really is, is going to continue to change and it's just going to be more and more necessary for everyone to have some kind of video literacy. So let's talk about what you consider to be the basic video production skills that all of us watching this should, should have. Um, it's kind of like all of us have word processing skills. You know, we all know how to create a document and to send documents to other people and to and many of us have blogging skills. We know how to put a, put a post, a written post on a website or on medium.com mm -hmm. or posting something on Facebook. But of course, now, like you said, uh, the, the technology has been so democratized that many of us can post videos. So what do you consider to be the basic video production skills? Yeah, so you definitely don't know, have to know everything about professional video production. I see it you know, as the same as like graphic design. Um, you, you, most everyone needs like some basic skills in Photoshop or you need to know how to resize photos and you need to know, you know, just a little, little bit of things that you can do in Canva to make your, your designs look yeah, better. That, that's what I was going to say. Like, I don't know Photoshop. I don't have Photoshop. So pho when I think Photoshop, that scares that, that scares yeah. the heck out of me because that sounds really complicated, but Canva. Yes. Canva.com. You know, for mm -hmm. those of you who don't know, hopefully many of you know, but Canva.com is like a, a free, well, they have paid features, but most of us use it for free, free, like graphic design stuff. But, but yeah. So what would be like, yes, like great, great uh, analogy, yeah. like resizing and, you know, basic design stuff. So what about video? How, what, what can we do with video? Yeah, absolutely. So the skills that you need, I would say they're equivalent to like basic Photoshop skills because if you're going to start, um, you know, really making an impact with video, you, you certainly can do Facebook Live and you can do Zoom and all that. But then if you want to start editing, so many people get stuck and they go, what do I do? You know, and, and it's going to be too time consuming to edit. So there's some basic editing tools that you can use. Of course, everyone knows like iMovie. There's also Adobe Premiere Rush. And there's many, many other um, video apps that you can use just on your phone. Like, for example, Apple Clips is one of them. So kind of, you know, getting those basic editing skills under your belt is really essential. But I also teach the skills we use in video production, which is pre-production. So knowing how to write a script a lot of times what holds people back and they feel so scared of being on videos because they think, you know, they're probably just going to turn on the camera and they need to know what to say. And, you know, and they need, and, and that does come naturally. You know, I think you're a great example of that. Um, but although me, I think I do some pre-production too, I just, I imagine you do. I just didn't yeah. call it that, but, but yes, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so if you're going to be, you know, editing videos together, like really building up your YouTube uh, channel, for example, you're going to want to have scripts because you're going to want to make your videos look really polished, make them stand out above the masses. You know, that's the thing when, when it's democratized, everybody can do it. Then like how many Facebook lives do you see in your feed every day? Or, you know, when you go on YouTube, you have so many choices. And so it's not only like the thumbnail, um, that, that's, you know, entirely different topic about SEO and YouTube, but just in terms of the pre-production, when people land on your video and they start watching your video, when you've prepared a script and when you've prepared your entire production, you know, making sure your location is right and that um, you have the right people, if you want other people working um, on your video, and just making sure the entire production is set up. There's so many ways you can set up 
set yourself up for success through pre-production. Um, and then the production, of course, is what a lot of people want to know when they get started, which is what microphones do I use and what lighting equipment? So um, yeah, as you start making your videos, I think it's great if people just get started no matter what, you know, using the tools that are available, the free tools, Facebook Live, Zoom, et cetera. Um, but as you go along, which you've probably seen, George, you know, you, you want to make sure that your lighting is right and you, your audio is a little bit better than it was when you first started out doing videos. So, so those are the kind of basic skills you need to get under your belt. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I totally, I totally agree. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot of people don't realize, like, we, we have to set these things up. Like, you have a nice back, back, backdrop. These plants that I have next to me, it took, it took some effort to like figure out how to place them so that they're actually in the frame. Because yeah. if, I, if we do it normally, and you, you, you wouldn't be able to see either plant, all, any of these plants. And I would have other things like, that were in the view. So yeah, it's like things like that that a lot of people don't think about. But it, it does make, make a difference because especially if you keep making more and more videos. So mm -hmm. um, let's talk about a couple things. I, I want to end with our conversation later with talking about making videos on our on our own phones right but before we get there i want to talk to you about youtube okay cool. so well to actually maybe we can give people context some of you are watching this video right now on youtube some of you are watching this on facebook what do you think is the difference between putting videos on facebook versus youtube what's your perspective about that yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm and well, also Instagram, a, if we want to say, I know a lot of people probably aren't watching this Instagram, but but YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, like they can all do videos. How should we be thinking about these 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 three? Yeah, I think it's a great question. I think well, as of now, you know, we should say this is all in the context of now because the social media landscape changes so quickly. Um, so what I see um, with Facebook, it's really about capturing people's attention in the feed. So Facebook Lives are really effective. And with, with both, with actually any of the social media networks, of course, the consistency is important. But you're really trying to capture attention in the feed in Facebook. With YouTube, you're capturing people's attention through search. And that's what a lot of people don't understand when they start out on YouTube. They are just wanting to put out videos that are topics they feel are important or, you know, this is something I want my audience to know about. But when people go to YouTube, you have to think about the user experience. And YouTube is the second largest search engine owned by Google, like most people know. And um, the experience is you go on there to search for videos. And yeah, once you do get familiar with, um, some content creators and you start following them, you might be willing to click on a video that, um, you know, just that content creator put out and is not necessarily something you're searching for. But um, in order to build your YouTube channel, you're really going to want to be focused on search. And so it's all about keywords and what people are actually going to YouTube to find out about. Yeah, that's really helpful. Yeah. And, um, so that, how, how does that affect how you plan your topics? So um, you have a, obviously you have a YouTube channel. How do you, let's focus on YouTube for now. Um, how do you, yeah, tell us kind of, give us a sense of how you go about planning the topics for your YouTube videos. For YouTube, um, there, are, there are some software that you can use for keyword research. So there's um, Keyword Planner, which is a plugin for Chrome. Um, there's also VidIQ and uh, Morning Fame, which you're familiar with. And you want to, you know, definitely at least use the free version of the software to get an understanding of what your competitors are doing. So the, these softwares, you know, when you plug in your keywords, they're going to be able to tell you what other people are already doing. And I think that um, it's, a, it's really important to start using this type of software because we kind of get stuck. You know, we, we can't do exactly what our competitors are doing, but we wanna be, you know, right there, um, you know, with the keywords that aren't as competitive. 
as the, the people that have already built up their YouTube channels. So you're capturing, you know, a, a large enough search volume, but where you're going to be appearing at the top of the logarithm. And, you know, these people that have built the software for SEO, like VidIQ and Morning Fame, and, um, you know, there's a bunch of others, then, you know, they just, ha they've done all the analyzing. So you can go in there and you can do your research. You have ideas for your videos, but then you can see, you know, like, for example, um, my YouTube channel is actually, you know, sort of in the beginning stages right now because I've been focused on just making videos, you know, just putting out videos for my clients. But um, when I go in there, I know that the, the uh, videos that are out there about video production, that's a hugely competitive space because there's people who have been in there for years and years building their channels. But that doesn't mean that I can't build my channel. It just means I have to be strategic and I have to understand if I go in there and I try to make a video, for example, about um, you know, what is the best lighting equipment? That's not the best video for someone who's just starting a channel on video production because there's too much competition. And I will never appear you know, in the search results when someone goes to type that in. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. Just yeah, it does. It's, it's very helpful. Um, so do you help your clients with this kind of stuff? So with them figuring out what kind of videos they should be making? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. We help them with the SEO and yeah. the keyword research. Nice. Nice. And okay. So let's talk about making videos on our phone. Um, you recently just produced a, an online course called um, iPhone Video Mastery. And I know the course is also applicable to people who don't, you know, most, a lot of people have iPhones here, but some of you have like Android phones or other phones. And then most of the courses material also, also uh, uh, applies. But tell us, um, you know, give us a, I mean, we, we don't have a, a whole lot of time, but give us in a few minutes, like, a few tips maybe that, that all of us can use to, to make better phone videos, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, one of the best apps I think out there right now for iPhones is Apple Clips. And it does a couple, well, it does many things. It's a free app that just comes with the newer iPhones. Um, it, it might come on some of the older ones, I'm not sure. But um, you're going to be able to use that for editing, but you're also going to be able to use it just for recording and capturing your videos. So that's one of the trickiest things people um, don't know. People ask me all the time is how do I caption my videos? And it can be multiple steps, you know, just to after you've recorded your video to get it captioned. But with Apple Clips, you're pressing record and it's auto captioning your videos, which I just think is amazing. And just um, to clarify for everybody, the captions are the words that show up at the bottom. And why, why are captions important? Let's start there. Yeah, the captions are really important because there's so many people that on any social media network are going to be listening, watching your video with the sound off. So they're not going to be listening. They're, you know, just busy doing other things. It's not that they don't want to hear you, but um, it sort of gives people like cliff notes and it gives them an ability to kind of cheat, you know, that if they see a video coming in with captions, they can say, hey, is this, is this something I'm interested in? Because everything's all about attention. You know, people's attention span is so short. And then it also is just a really great thing to do for people who are disabled, hard of hearing. And there's a lot of people out there like that, that, you know, that do need the captions. You know, it's funny. When I watch videos, I actually prefer to have the captions on whenever possible. So, and so I really, yeah, even though I'm grateful not to be, you know, hard of hearing or, or anything, but I just, it's just helpful to, for me to kind of see the words also. Um, it's, and I'm always very grateful when uh, the video creator has gone through the trouble of actually making the captions readable because captions aren't, and I apologize to those who will watch my videos. I only really edit the first two minutes or first minute and minute and a half of captions. And then I kind of leave, leave, leave the rest to gobbledygook. But you know, most of the time YouTube, actually YouTube has 
uh, auto captioning too, mm -hmm. right? Like, like yeah. most of the time the captioning is pretty good, but sometimes I talk fast and then, so it doesn't catch the right words or whatever, but, mm -hmm. but you're telling us right now about the, this, uh, iPhone software called Apple clips and mm -hmm. the captioning feature there is really good. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and so what, what was the question you're wondering about other tips for shooting with the iPhone or shooting with the smartphone? Yeah. Yeah. Any other tips you want to share with us, uh, for those of us who, you know, who like to make videos on the phone or who, who I've, I've thought about it. I think it's really imperative to invest in some kind of stabilization equipment. So okay. like a mini tripod can be great. Um, especially if you're not going to shoot in the same location every time but it can be helpful even if you're just shooting at home because it, if you've ever tried to just shoot with your iPhone, it can be hard to just keep it stable when you're, you know, sitting there holding, holding it in your hand. Um, especially, you know, after a minute, two minutes, you don't see it, but when you go back and watch the video after you've shot it, it can turn out shaky and, um, you'll just, you'll notice your videos just come out a lot smoother. And then you just have more options for, you know, what locations you want to shoot in because you'll just ha you'll know that you have that stabilization and you can set it up on, you know, set it up high to capture something, um, you know, on your desk or on the ground. There's just many ways that the uh, stabilization mini tripods can work really well. Cool, cool. So what else do you cover in your iPhone video mastery course? Maybe give us a, a quick sense of what people will, will learn when they sign up. Yeah, so there's four modules and it covers, the first one is just all about getting over the fear of being on video. So, you know, how can we really gain confidence to make videos consistently? And then the next three modules are just all about learning the skills of basic professional video production. So we're not gonna be, you know, shooting feature films, but it's just, you know, knowing how to write a script. We actually go through how to write your intro video. So when someone lands on your website, how do they, you know, if you've ever tried to record that, a lot of times people come up with these long videos and you really only want it to be 90 seconds. So you learn how to write a 90 second script and then learn how to shoot and edit that video. Great, awesome. So of course there will be a link below to check out the course. Um, any other kind of, I guess, parting tips as we end the conversation about, about video that maybe there's, is there like a common myth uh, that people often have, like something you, you find yourself having to explain to your students or your clients, something, anything you want to share like that? Sure. Well, we talked about how there's a perception that video production is so expensive that definitely is changing with the cost of equipment and we go through that in my course um, but also people just perceive that video production is time consuming it is time consuming i'm not going to lie about that when you get into editing and it's just but it's just like anything this is what i really want people to understand if you're going to make something that's quality and that kind of stands out above the masses that's different and you know, really draws people attention, you do have to put time into it. And the editing can be time consuming. Um, but once you have the skills under your belt, you know, if you enjoy it, if you do enjoy making videos on your own, then um, it doesn't seem as time consuming. It only seems time consuming now because you don't have those skills. And it's the same thing. Like I've been learning Facebook ads from you and I'm like, man, this is taking so much time. But it's just because I don't have those skills and I need to kind of get um, in the mind frame that it's just going to take a little bit of time to have those skills under my belt. Yeah, that's a really, really good point. Yeah, because I, I make time for the Facebook ad stuff. And then, of course, it works well for me. But same thing with video editing. I could see where it's like, yeah, if you make and it's like you don't have to spend 10 hours for each video, even, even if you did some editing. It probably improves the video um, than, than if you didn't, right? So uh, anyway, I look forward to people following up with you, Sarah. Um, I'll have the links to your the course, but also to your website. And if anybody has any questions, uh, kind of quick questions for Sarah to answer, you can go and comment below. Uh, make sure she sees it. Uh, Sarah, thank you for the work that you do for people, for you know now creating uh, 
courses that people can get. So anything else before we go? Any other kind of encouraging words for folks? I would say just do it, you know, just, just get started. I mean, yes. that's the main thing. Yeah, great, great. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you, George.